nine, eight, seven, six, five. share my application here. Um, so good evening, everyone who's on the call. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to, to spend with us tonight. My name is Stephanie McCullough, and I'm with the Community Plans Division of the Metro Nashville Planning Department. Um, we're here to talk today about a planning amendment, uh, uh, amendment to the South Nashville Community Plan, case number 2020-CP-011-001. Um, and on this slide as well. It's strange because I have so many things on the one screen that I'm trying to navigate at the same time, but so I can only see half my slides at the time. Um, as I mentioned, we are, um, this is gonna be recorded for Metro Nashville Network on their Facebook page, it's running live, and then we'll have this available on YouTube tomorrow for anyone that you, who hasn't had a chance to see it or wants to see it again. Um, if you're watching this and you want to log on and follow along with us now, um, go to your computer to nashville.gov slash MPC. And if you scroll down to the bottom, there's an events link um, for com this community meeting. If you click on that, it will give you a link to go and join as a, um, a participant in the video call. Okay, so joining me tonight um, are quite a few people. Um, on staff with me with planning is Ms. Anita McKay, who's also in community plans, and Jean Burst, who is in community plans formerly from land development. Um, for the applicant team, we have, let me make sure I find my list, and I'm just going with who I can see on the screen, John Shepard, um, Ian Shriver, Andrew Wolfers, Shannon Hunt, and Zach Hunt. Did I miss anybody uh, from the applicant team? Okay. And then last but not least, we have Councilmember Colby Sledge with us. Um, Councilman Sledge, would you like to say anything before we get started? Um, no, just thanks for everybody for making time to be here and looking forward to the conversation. Cool. Thank you, sir. Okay, so why are we here? Let's see if I can do this right. Okay. Oh, well, actually, before they end, the meeting logistics, I think I went over a little bit of this. So, again, if you want to join and or if you want to watch online, then there's the link for that. Um, Facebook Live is going right now. Um, anyone who is not on the panelist team, you are automatically muted. So, um, we will open that up if you want to verbally ask your question. But you also have an opportunity, and I'll show these again in just a second, on a Q&A, uh, to answer, ask your questions through the Q&A panel that is on the screen as well. Um, and as I said, meetings be recorded. So if you if someone missed it, then they can come watch it after that. My clicking is not working. Okay. okay. So as I said, um, if you're looking at your screen at the bottom, it should have a icon that says close or open Q and A. And then there's a question box there that says all panelists. Just make sure that when you're typing, if you're typing in a question, you type it in that all panelists category, so we can see it. So that we can see it, and make sure that we're getting those answered. And we'll, we'll start to answer those after the presentation. You can also send your question at any time and we'll try to kind of group them together if there's something, if there's similar things that are asked about. Okay, and then as, as I've mentioned, you if you want to raise your hand, there's also a little hand icon there and we can raise your hand and then once, once we get to the Q&A, we can, you can ask that question that way. And that's when we would unmute you, unmute you to answer your question, ask your question out loud. Okay, so, the brief agenda, I think I've talked about the purpose of the meeting and as part of me, as we go through this, um, we give you a little bit of information about the community meet, community planning process in Nashville. Um, and we're gonna talk about the difference between policy and zoning and how they're related. Um, then we're gonna uh, show you the proposed plan amendment for this particular case. Um, after that, I'll give it to the applicant to give a, a description of the zoning that they're looking to do, um, their SP plan and what, the, what they want to do on the site. And then we'll open up for questions, questions and discussion. And after that, I'll give you kind of a, an outline of what's next. Okay, so here's the study area. Um, well, we're here because we want to hear from you and we want your feedback on, on, the, on the changes that are proposed. This is the study area outlined in red. The hash property is the property that the applicant has put in a rezoning request for. Oftentimes when we do these studies, we look at kind of what makes sense as a larger area. And so it didn't really make sense to leave that one piece of that of that block out of this conversation. So we're looking at it as that as that block, whether or not to, to make the changes to the plan. Okay. Okay. For those of you who are a little more kind of axiometric, this is a Google view of the area. So 
101 Factor Street is here in the center. There's that other parcel I was referring to. Um, over here is Trebecca, with the Smith House here. And then, of course, the railroad tracks. Oh my gosh, this thing is giving me fits today. The railroad tracks, and then the um, over to the to the west is um, where we, which Houston and Chestnut Hill neighborhoods. Okay, um, just another uh, a, a view of the site from Factory Street and Geyser, just kind of looking to the southeast. Um, looking west along Colbert Street, which is at the southern border of the study area, and then um, just to get just to get you an idea of where you where we are in the area. So, community planning in Nashville. We have 14 community plans within this um, within the county. Um, this is our you're in the South Nashville Community Plan. This group, this area. Um, these uh, plans make this um, help guide decision making for the future of a built and natural environment. Um, and this is how we get, gather input on what the community wants. So these, this is the guidance for how we change the, um, the zoning moving forward. Um, so with that, we have what's called the community character manual. And that's kind of our toolbox of how we apply different things that are in, within the community area. Um, it explains it, it institutes the community character policies that are in each plan. Uh, it provides the direction for the use of zoning tools for tools such as zoning, and it helps shape the form, the character of the community. So each, each, let me back it up. Oh my gosh. Okay. And so what the community character manual is used, it's organized by the transect. And that's what this diagram shows. It based on the development type and area. So what you have here, you know, it goes from T1, which is a natural area where there's very little development, if any, down to T6, which is downtown, which would be the most dense type of development. Um, most of the area, most of the um, property around here that would be, that's not industrial, and I'll go back and talk about those different types in just a minute, um, is in the T4 urban category. The CCM also provides guidance on different uses like civic, conservation, and transition, and then those and different open spaces within each of those transects. Okay. The transect also has um, a special category called districts, and that's what most of this, um, what this policy is, um, what this property's policy is currently. Um, districts are areas that serve a special purpose with limited function. And so we have six of those, uh, destination retail, employment center, district impact, industrial, major institutional, and office concentration. Out of these, um, some of these are very, not com they're not compatible with like a typical neighborhood development. So they are their own se se segregated spaces. Um, so you would think about that for district impact, industrial, things like that. So you think of like your airports, um, any kind of factory sites, things like that are in those kind of categories. Retail, destination retail is like your big shopping centers, like, um, well, with kind of like Hickory Hollow Mall, things like that that are, have lots of, or, um, I'm just gonna leave it there. It's the bigger um, the, uh, commercial districts. Employment centers are those areas where you have a lot of offices or different things in, in an area where people would drive to to go to work and then drive home. Um, industrial is where you have most of your uses of um, like your storage, your freighting, different things like that. Um, factories are in the just in that area, and then major institutional is your colleges and universities. Okay, so in this area we have conservation, which I talked about is one of those that fits within a number of categories. Conservation helps protect areas that are um, natural or that are to potentially, um, that do not need, need to be disturbed. Those are like your steep slopes, your floodplains, um, areas like that. And as you can see in this area, it's mainly floodplain or floodway, which a lot of people who've been in this area for a while are familiar with the 2010 flood and knew how, and saw how much damage could be done there. Um, as I mentioned, the property that we're talking about today is district industrial. And so you have a little bit more of that to the south and to the east there. And then, of course, to the north of that, you have Trebecca, which is that um, district major institutional. Now, beside it is the uh, is the plan, is the policy that is proposed for this site. And it's T4 urban mixed use neighborhood. And I'll, I'll go back into that in just a second. The zoning for this area is primarily industrial or office. 
Um, you can see here this MULA is the alloy development up on the hill that is like a mixed use um, multifamily residential. And then you also have the specific plan zoning, which is in this area as well, which is what is going to be proposed for this site. And the applicant will talk about that a little bit further in the presentation. Okay, so as I said, the request is to change from district industrial to um, T4 mixed use. Okay, so T4 mixed use is an urban mixed use neighborhood is um, um, provides access to uh, moderate to high density residential um, areas. It's mixed use, so it has some shops and different things within that area. Um, high, um, like really good connectivity. You have your alleys and streets that kind of form a grid and everything's kind of pushed up toward the street. And industrial is dominated, like I said, is one dominated by one or more activities, um, commercial distribution manufacturing. So that's what you see in the areas of the South. Um, why are policies important? Why are we even having this conversation? Um, these policies, policies guide the Planning Commission's recommendations to the Council for Zone Changes. Um, those requests, usually requests are consistent with the policy, so this isn't something that has to happen, but when the when there's a, an interest in changing those things, that's when we have to have a conversation about whether we want the policy to move in that direction. Um, as I said, the current zone sh change request is not consistent because it's requesting to have um, multifamily and uh, commercial uses in, in a mix in mixed buildings. So that's one of the reasons that we have, that the applicant has that's made this um, request. Um, so the change to the community plan of public engagement is required, which is why we're having this meeting. And um, we, so we sent out the notices to the to, your, to the neighbors and to make sure that people knew about this process and can get um, the right information. So, as I said, land use policy and zoning are different. As um, the land use policy, as I, as I mentioned before, is what um, provides guidance and vision for an area. Um, the policy change with a plan amendment doesn't change the current zoning. That's a two different two step process. So the applicant has to apply for this plan amendment as well as the rezoning. Um, so the zone rezoning request, as I said, was from the industrial IWD zoning to SP. Um, that is the that is the guidance. That's the legal guidance of what can happen on that property. Um, it's influenced by the policies I said, and it is the control. It controls the physical development of the land. So with this SP or with any other rezoning, that gives you the guidance for the height, the density, and how the um, how the buildings are laid out on the site. Okay, just a quick so, a summary of some of the things we look at when we when we talk about plan amendments. It's not just something that we take very lightly. We consider all of these things in some form or another when we. Um, when we consider this. And so part of that is, as you see here, community sentiment is just as important as some of the guiding, the guidance documents we have and the access that we look at through um, our street grid. Okay, so I'm sure y'all are tired of hearing from me. So now I'm going to pass it over to the applicant team to um, talk about the SP itself. Great. Um... Thank you very much, Stephanie. Um, I'll dive right in. If, can, can everybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. That was an um, informative discussion on the plan amendment process. Uh, my name is John Shepard. Um, I work for Elmington. Uh, I'm here uh, on behalf of the applicant. Elmington is the applicant. Uh, other, A few other members of the development team here uh, this evening are uh, Andrew Walters from uh, Catalyst Engineering, uh, Ian Shriver uh, from Southeast Venture, uh, and then Zach Hunt and Sharon Hunt from the Strategy Group. So uh, all of us are, are part of the development team and here to answer your questions and and uh, hear your feedback um, and, and and allow that to inform the the rezoning request that that uh, we're discussing tonight. I would just uh, like to say thank you to uh, planning staff uh, for organizing this meeting and, and hosting it. Um, Councilman Sledge, uh, thank you very much for, for being here this evening. Um, and to, to all the District 17 residents um, who are taking time out of your evening or maybe watching this tomorrow, 
um, to get informed and, and comment on uh, something that's happening in your neighborhood. So we value that, that feedback and, and thank you all for your time. Uh, so like I said, my name is John uh, Shepard. Uh, Elmington is the company I work for. We are a local company based here in Nashville. Uh, we've been around for about 10 years. Um, we um, have a, a good track record that we really value. Um, have done a number of other projects in Nashville and in um, this neighborhood specifically in, in District 17 and close by. Um, a couple that you might be familiar with are uh, the reservoir development, which is a large uh, mixed use development around uh, the reservoir at 8th and Edge Hill. Uh, there's some construction going on there that you may see. Uh, the 12th and Wedgwood development, um, which is a, uh, a development <laughs> creatively at, at, located at the corner of 12th and Wedgwood. Uh, it's a four, four story um, brick deal that uh, you, you may have seen there on the northeast corner of that intersection. And then uh, we've done some redevelopment work in, um, I think this is outside of the district technically, but in, uh, uh, in Hillsborough Village uh, on Belcourt, um, there's some where um, Hobdotty and Altered State are. Uh, that's a property that, that we redeveloped uh, with some office in the back and uh, some residential use too. It's a mixed use mixed use building there. So we've we've been active in the area for a while. Um, we take a lot of pride in the stuff that we we build and um, we uh, we we manage it as well as build it. We're long term owners. Um, and, and and so we uh, were the um, you know the, we're here in the community on a, on a daily basis and um, uh, place a lot of place a lot of value on our our reputation and everything that we build. Um, you know we are we are community focused, but, so we approach events like this and, and opportunities for feedback like this with uh, with that top of mind. Um, and then tonight, I mean, our goal is to inform you about the rezoning request that uh, is in front of you and, and will be, uh, you know, hopefully headed to planning commission and ultimately to Metro Council and uh, get your feedback on it and, and be good listeners. So uh, we, we think it's a good project. Obviously, we wouldn't be putting it forward if we didn't. Um, we, we think it uh, will have... You know, relatively minimal impacts to the neighborhood, um, and, and and those impacts will will be positive ones. Um, but we, uh, we we want to hear what you have to say as well. So we'll we'll go through a little detail about what we're proposing. I'll hand it off to Andrew uh, Walther, so you can who, who will provide some information on the the proposal itself, and then um, we'll do questions at the end and and answer whatever questions that you have. Um, and the last thing I would just say before I hand it over to Andrew is, uh, you know, uh, whatever feedback you have, uh, if, if you're not, you know, don't feel comfortable giving it tonight or, or uh, it's more detailed than we can answer in this format, um, you know, I would just encourage you to reach out and provide that feedback uh, either to, to us, uh, the development team, to, to planning staff, or to Councilman Sledge. Um, you know, all, all those folks want, want to hear it. And uh, so I would just encourage you to to provide that, you know, positive, uh, negative or otherwise. So um, with that, I will uh, see if we can hand it off to Andrew here. Yeah, it's uh, Stephanie, if somebody could give me the share content ability again. My, uh, there you go. All right, hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Great. All right. Well, John, thank you for that. And I second everything you said. Uh, Stephanie, thank you for organizing this. And uh, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to come and present uh, the project to this group. And so I won't uh, spend too much time on these, but just um, wanted to present just some inspirational imagery. Uh, this is um, something that Southeast Venture put together on the architecture side, just to sort of show the type of quality and the type of project that we're looking to construct here. Again, these are just the representative examples of, of some of the imagery that we were looking for uh, and look, looking towards for inspiration for our development. Uh, so with that, let me jump into the, the site plan. Uh, this is a, a, a rendered site plan that sort of depicts how we're looking at developing this property. As you can see, there are three separate buildings. Um, 
the buildings, given that it's T4 policy, as uh, Stephanie covered, that that's what we'll be looking to to modify the policy to. Um, that's really speaking to having buildings that are, are articulated and, and have frontage along the street. So you see that where we can, uh, we have tried to orient the buildings to have street fr uh, frontage, certainly along factory is sort of the main corridor. Uh, Geyser is very steep. So, um, you know, really from a project standpoint, it doesn't orient very well to, to uh, front the buildings on there. But we do have some parts of the buildings at front uh, along Geyser. And then Colbert on the backside, um, we do have some, some frontage uh, of, the, of the building along, along Colbert Street. Um, the low parts of the site are in these corners where you see uh, we have some stormwater detention, bioretention elements that are likely going to be going in those spots, just given that those are the low parts of the site. And so um, what you'll notice about this plan, this has a large uh, central amenity area uh, that we'll sort of be carving up into a dog park. Uh, I've got a next slide that sort of shows one option that we're looking at. Um, you know, again, open green space, lawn for some, from areas, uh, for some areas for activities. Uh, we'll have a mail kiosk and a grilling station, and some, some uh, functional spaces as well for, for residents to sort of congregate. Uh, but this is a quite a large space, so we, we are looking to program that with, with uh, some amenities for the residents. And lastly, um, and Ian can certainly speak to some of this, but here's, here's sort of where we're at with the architecture and, and some perspective views uh, from the street. So you can see this would be a quality development, four stories in height as it presents to the street. Uh, the buildings are three, four split. I, I probably could have noted that on the, on the uh, other slide, but uh, the parking lot level, is, there is a lot of to topography on this site. And so the parking lot level will be sitting up one level uh, from the street sides along Culvert and along uh, the factory street. So you see it's four story to the street and then three story in the rear. And um, that's really it. John, I uh, probably left some things out. Ian, feel free to jump in uh, if there's some other points or highlights to, to touch on. I think that's great. Thank you, Andrew. I'm, I think uh, we can leave it to Q&A and, and probably some more things may come out there, but uh, I think that yeah. was a great overview. Okay. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so with that, if I can have the presentation skills back, the bouncy ball, I'll go back to my slides. And, okay, so we've heard, we've heard my spiel on the policy, we've talked to the applicant. Um, so now, as I said, I'm opening up for Q and A. Um, if you are on your computer with the WebEx app, there should be a, 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 a panel at the bottom of the um, panelist section, and you can type in a question there, or there is a hand at the bottom of your screen there that would, um, you basically click that, it's like raising your hand, and we can call on you, unmute you to answer, ask a question. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Anybody? Um, I'm not seeing anyone's hands raised yet, Stephanie. Okay. Thank you, Anita. Um, okay. Well, while we wait, um, Councilman, is there anything you would want to add about this project or uh, talk about the process after after it goes to Planning Commission? I guess I can yeah. go through that part and then while people are asking questions. Sure. Okay. Oh. Sorry, I'll let me do my little piece and then you can talk about what comes after. Sorry. Okay, so basically after this meeting, um, I'll be writing a staff report for the Planning Commission public hearing, which is on November 12th. Um, I don't think, Anita, have we found out if that's virtual or not? I don't think we know yet. Oh, we don't know yet. Okay, so stay tuned, but it may either be virtual or in person, depending on where we are with the um, coronavirus and um how we want to proceed from there but until in between then you can talk to me by you can either call me and leave me a message or email comments to me and you can see that on the screen there um 
before that meeting. So everything I can get before the 6th will give me information on how the community feels about the project, and then we can um, make recommendations to Planning Commission based on those things. So um, I'm going to go back to this slide, and then Councilman Sledge, if you want to um, discuss what happens after. So after it goes to Planning Commission, it goes to the Metro Council for three readings. Right, yeah, and, and so the second of those readings is a public hearing in council as well, um, which means that there are two opportunities essentially for public hearing. It's public, um, you know, it's public hearing on the, the, the for the commission and public hearing for the council. Um, and, uh, and, and basically the timeline would be essentially from the point that we're sitting here, it's usually about three months. Um, so and people, same people who get noticed um, it's the same sort of radius um, for that public hearing, so people will receive something in the mail saying, um, and we are meeting in person, the council is meeting in person in the Music City Center. So whenever that public hearing is, um, which would probably, the earliest it would be is the, the first meeting in December, um, th there will be a notice that gives, you know, an indication that it'll be at the Music City Center, it'll be a certain time and date. Um, and just for a reminder, for anybody who's on the call, um, masks are required in the Music City Center. Great, thank you. Um, I still don't see any questions or any hands. I need, am, I, am I reading that correct? You are correct. Roughly? No hands raised. Okay, well, um, I guess then if there are no questions, we can adjourn. As I said, um, my contact information is on the planning department's webpage. It's on the notice that you probably received in the mail and on this presentation, which will be, it's probably wrapping up now. It'll be wrapped up on Facebook Live, of course, and then it will be on YouTube, hopefully tomorrow morning, at tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow afternoon. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, this process, one thing I should note is that the policy amendment stops at the planning commission. So if you feel that this is not something that we should be taking, changing from industrial to a mixed use development at all, then I need to know those kind of things. Um, if you have issues particularly with the development itself, but not necessarily with the idea of having mixed use development in this area, then we need to talk about um, the rezoning request as well, at itself. So um, with that, uh, I thank you all for your time and I look forward to hearing from some of you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone.